Hey everyone, Dr. D here. In this video, I'm going to answer some more student questions. So let's get started. Here's a question. Uh, Dr. D, what are your thoughts about chiropractors? All right, well, I think uh, there's uh, value to, to chiropractors, and uh, but at the same time, I believe there's some questionable methods in the field um, as well. Um, see, I'm not an expert on chiropractors, but... Um, I, I know that there are uh, there is some science behind some of their techniques, but then some of their qu techniques I, I question. Uh, but again, I'm not I'm not an expert, so uh, I, I I don't know you know I don't know if that's a great response. So so I, I'm not going to weigh one way or the other on that one. All right, other questions. Let's see. Here's a question. Dear Professor, as a student, I would like to ask you about the science field. In your opinion, what is the most challenging part of science? Uh, and what do you recommend uh, us as a beginning to do for a strong foundation? Okay, so what is challenging about science and what would you, uh, what would I recommend as a strong foundation? Well, uh, science... Um, is interesting um, and um, I guess the challenging part would be uh, I guess fields or parts of science that you might require but aren't really natural to you so for example uh, I was never too strong on numbers and math though I did do fairly well in calculus 1 and 2 I, I, I got a strong A in calculus 1 and I believe I got a B plus in calculus too. Uh, so, um, but but I really you know didn't feel comfortable with it. So I, I think you know the parts of science that make it tough are the parts that maybe don't grasp your interest as much, but you have to like uh, complete them. Like the math component for some people, it could be you know the biology component for others or the chemistry component for others. Uh, I, I'm you know, uh, but but as long as you're taking good notes you should be able to build upon that foundation. Uh, and that's why it's really important that you're, you're right now in Biology 1406, and um, this is a good chance for you to build a strong foundation in biology uh, because what we're covering this semester is the cell. And uh, the cell is the fundamental unit of life. Uh, you typically can't be simpler than a cell and be alive. So... Um, if you pay attention to my class, by the end of the semester, you should be pretty well aware of what a cell is, how a cell works, and how life works. So when you learn about animals and plants in the future, you're going to be able to understand them. And, and when you ultimately hear, uh, learn about humans, because you want to go on and be a doctor or a nurse or what have you, uh, you will have a very good foundation there. So good question. All right, what else? Let's see. All right, this is a long question, so let's break it down. So I decided to get into science from my curiosity about life around me and how it's all possible. I expected big fireworks and explosions, but was met with boring equations and math. So, Professor, uh, as a practitioner of science, uh, do you really love it? Ooh, this is a, this is a bold question. I like it. Uh, <laughs> If uh, if so, how did you find out? Uh, also, for me as a student, what advice uh, can you give me to make my college life a full and enriched experience? Most students I interact with just come for classes and go home. Should we students be doing something on campus or getting involved in? All right, all right. Well, before I read further, let's let's break down your question. Let's let's go one part at a time because uh, it is. Uh, very uh, long questions uh, or series of questions. So let me let me try to break it down. So let's see again. So you decided to get into science and you thought it was going to be amazing, and you expected all these big fireworks, but then you got really bored with math. Uh, I I feel you. You know I I was never a big math person myself. You know I've had arguments, you know <laughs> myself with math faculty that you know why does someone who doesn't have any intention of uh, u utilizing calculus need to pass calculus in order to get a degree to do something 
that doesn't require any calculus. And usually they say, well, because calculus makes you think in kind of a condescending way as though the other fields don't make you think. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like it's like math is the only way to get people to think or something. Um, I, I don't know why math is such a big deal in society and why society has made math such a fundamental thing as though if you can't finish a math class, uh, you, you're doomed to a, a menial life uh, that, that you know is not uh, meant for success. I don't know why society values math so much personally. I, I'm a very, very... I went to a very, very prestigious school and got a PhD in genetics, which anyone would argue that is a, an academic achievement. And then I did two postdoctoral fellowships, and I have never had to use anything above algebra myself. So, um, you know, the, the thing is society has, has, uh, has spoken. Society has chosen math as uh, its a pillar of, uh, I don't know, academic success. And, you know, it's, it's a marker of of intelligence or who knows what, uh, and the ability to think according to society. And so uh, very unfortunate for those of us who aren't fans of math, um, but it's it's a hoop that you have to jump through. And I had to jump through it. Like I said, I took Calculus 1. I took Calculus 2. And uh, did I enjoy them? Not really. But did I learn the fundamentals? Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's sort of like a rite of passage. You can think of it as a rite of passage. Why math is a rite of passage and not something else, uh, you got me on that one. But here's the thing. It gets better, okay? It, it gets better. Just because, just because math, you know, is kind of boring and, and you know, uh, to you and to me, <laughs> you know, not to everyone. Don't get me wrong. Lots of people love math and they just want to do math equations all day long and, and that's what makes them very happy. Uh, but, but, you know, I didn't really, you know, I, I, di I didn't really uh, think math was, you know, something I was very much interested in, but it was something that is uh, a hurdle, you know, um, and, it, and it's, it, it's almost to a, to a <laughs> it's, it's almost to an excessive degree. Uh, uh, for, for example, okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. I, I did calculus one and calculus two at uh, San Diego State, right, for my bachelor's degree, and, and I went, went on and did my PhD. Uh, when, I, when I tried to do an associate's degree at Richland, actually, when I tried to do an associate's degree, they said, okay, transfer your, your credits over from San Diego State. I said, okay, uh, let me transfer my credits over to, to Richland from San Diego State. Okay, well, um, so all my math classes should be waived, right? All my math classes were satisfied at San Diego State. And they took a look and uh, the credit audit people told me that, no, sorry, Dr. D, even though you're Dr. D with a degree and, uh, you know, advanced degree in genetics, um, your calculus class and uh, calculus one and calculus two classes don't transfer to Richland. Uh, and I said, why not? And they said, well, because what you took was calculus for life sciences, and what we have here is calculus for, you know, just basic calculus, which is for engineering and all that. And I said, oh, I didn't realize there was a difference between calculus for life sciences and calculus for non-life sciences. And they said, indeed, there it is a difference, Dr. D. There's a big difference between calculus for life sciences and calculus for non-life sciences. And so I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to get a degree in, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I was at the time I was trying to get a, an associates in computer programming. And uh, I, I didn't want to go on and get a bachelor's in computer programming. I didn't want to become a computer programmer, but I wanted to learn programming so that I could further my career and maybe make some simple programs that will help me and my class, you know. So I, I explained this clearly to them uh, at the degree audit that, listen, I took calculus before. Yes, it's not the exact same calculus, I guess, technically, as they have over here, but I'm not trying to use calculus. In fact, I'll never program anything that requires uh, any kind of calculus. I can assure you that I'm not even trying to get I'm not I'm not even trying to get uh, into a career in programming. So. You know, can you please waive my 
calculus classes so that I can pursue this degree in programming and get this credential that will help my career where I'll make programs that are very basic for my students. And uh, long story short, nope. <laughs> so so uh, my, my uh, Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 classes that uh, I took at San Diego State because those were the ones that they told me to take, uh, they don't actually transfer to Richland. And to add insult to injury, you know what they told me? They told me that, uh, uh, and they, they had more bad news for me. And I said, well, what is all this bad news? And they said, well, th you only took Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 in, uh, in university. You didn't take anything else. And I said, no, I didn't because I took algebra, I took pre-algebra, I took pre-calculus, uh, I took trigonometry, I took all that in high school. So when I went to San Diego State, I didn't need to take algebra, I didn't need to take trig, I didn't need to take pre-calc. I, I, I simply took calculus one, got an A, and then I took calculus two, and that was kind of a rough semester for me, and I got a B or B plus. So yeah, and they said, well, that's very unfortunate for you, Dr. D. And I said, why is that so unfortunate for me? And they said, well, because we don't know you know any math. Uh, and I was like, oh, okay. I, okay. <laughs> How did I go to San Diego State and get an A in Calculus 1, even if it is Mickey Mouse Calculus 1, in your opinion, if I don't know any math? And they said, yes, but you see, since we don't accept your Calculus 1, nor do we accept your Calculus 2, uh, the big problem here is that, uh, you know, uh, we, we ha you don't have any other calculus classes that are university level. So uh, if you want to pursue an associates in computer programming here, uh, you'd have to start again with algebra. Unless you could test out of algebra and then test out of trig and then test out of pre-calc. And so... Uh, Long story short, I didn't want to go and sign up for a bunch of tests, and nor did I have full confidence that I could pass those tests, not having even looked at most of those equations in the last 20, 25 years. So um, it basically uh, put the kibosh on my lifelong learning uh, pursuit, and basically it, it was a, it was another example of how the system. Uh, puts roadblocks in your way, uh, and a lot of them are math roadblocks, and and I think uh, needlessly, you know, um, uh, like I said, they made a big deal about calculus when I was in college. I got my A's and B's. I moved on. Never had to utilize that math again, and yet to this day, those classes still kind of haunt me. So I know what you're talking about is what I'm trying to say. I can commiserate with you that, um, you know, the system sometimes can really make uh, the, the, the learning boring, you know, and take the fun right out of it. So, um, you know, but here's the thing. You need to uh, persevere. You need to jump over the hurdles. Everyone has the same set of hurdles. Um, and everyone, it, it's like society put these particular hurdles in front of you and they expect you to, uh, you know, navigate around them or through them or above them or below them or however you got to navigate them, you have to navigate them. And that's a sign to society that you're smart and can, you know, persevere and don't give up and you have a certain amount of stick to Uh, but what I can tell you is, uh, once you've got your credentials, once you do have that degree, it does get better and you can focus more on the stuff that you do like and less on the stuff that you don't. So I hope that personal anecdote helps you. Uh, but yes, math is a big gatekeeper and I'm not entirely sure if it should be. And that's just my opinion. Other people will, you know, argue with me till they're blue in the face and say, you know, give me the virtues of math. But, you know, I have a, I have a degree uh, of the, uh, uh, you know, I have a degree that's uh, a terminal degree uh, in genetics at a top research institution. I've published papers in scientific journals in biochemistry and uh, genetics. And I've worked at top research institutions, UCLA, UT Southwestern. And I, and I haven't had to use anything above basic algebra. 
Uh, so, and some statistics, very little statistics, uh, doing like a two-tailed t-test uh, and getting the standard error of the means, which is not anything but algebra. <laughs> so, you know, um, I find the claim that higher level math is so important, I find that claim kind of dubious myself. But then that's why I'm a biology professor and not a math professor. <laughs> I'm sure a math professor would tell you the opposite. So, next thing. So, Professor, as a practitioner of science, do you really love it? You know, I do love it. I, I love I love science because I love learning, uh, and I love learning uh, about the universe. I love learning about things around me, and that's why I'm I'm an, I'm a lifelong learner. Even though uh, I was kind of uh, dissuaded and discouraged from pursuing uh, computer programming because they threw math hurdles in front of me and were unwilling to bend on them. Uh, you know, uh, I just, you know, I could have taken all those math classes again and carried on, but, you know, I didn't really want to. So I chose something else I was really curious about. I chose automotive technology. And um, believe it or not, I still have to take an algebra class to get my certificate in that because, again, they don't they don't accept my uh, my math and they don't waive anything. They, they tell me to test out of it. So. So <laughs> I'll have to take algebra with all the uh, incoming first year students. Um, but anyway, um, I do love science, and and yeah, I don't love some of the uh, you know you know red tape and some of some of these roadblocks that they throw in front of you students uh, almost needlessly. Uh, so I do love science. I do love learning. Uh, ask my wife. Uh, <laughs> all I do is read uh and i don't read novels or or fiction books uh i can't tell you the last time i read a, a novel but i'm always reading textbooks i'm always reading instruction manuals and diagrams and i'm always reading uh how to's uh and and watching videos on youtube on how to this how to that i'm right now i'm learning about cars I, uh, in fact after this video i'm going to uh you know do my homework for automotive technology. I, I'm, I learn. That's what I do. I'm a lifelong learner. I love science. Uh, but do I, you know, do I love all aspects of science? Uh, you know, some parts I find boring myself, like math. Um, you know, I, I appreciate math. I appreciate math. But do I find doing math problems fun? No, not really. Uh, and then let's see. If so, how did you find out? Well, you know, you know if you're interested in science because, you know, um, you're just naturally curious about things. When I was 12 years old, I was memorizing the bones of the body. You know, I still know the bones of the body, not because I took an anatomy class, because I've never actually taken an anatomy class, but I know all the bones of the body because I memorized them when I was 12 years old out of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Also, for me as a student, what advice can you give me? To make my college life a full and enriched experience. Um, okay, so yeah, because you said most students you interact with just come to classes and go home. That's one of the pitfalls of being at a community college. See, I went to San Diego State and they have a dorm, and uh, some of my best friends I met in the dorms, you know, because you live together. And when you live together, it's just so much easier to bond and do go do things. And you know, you'll be bored in your room and you know, Joe is bored in his room. It's like, hey, let's go out and watch a movie or let's go out and do this or that and grab a pizza. It's like, all right, let's go. And next thing you know, you're best buds uh, forever. Uh, so, you know, um, that is really hard to achieve in, in, um, in, in community college, but it's not impossible. An another, another thing is I'm, I'm really good pals with uh, people I, you know, um, People I did my labs with, you know, uh, students that went to labs with me. Um, so, you know, some of your lab mates, maybe invite them to a coffee shop, study together, make study buddies. A lot of times your study buddies become your best friends. Uh, some of my best friends today are some of my study buddies from labs in biology back in the day. Should we students be doing something on campus or getting involved? In no, just you know, study together, hang out together, go out, get coffee together. That's how you build kinship if you don't have a dorm room experience. And when you transfer to a UTD or a UNT or whatever, maybe try living in the dorms a semester. That's where I, got, you know, where I found all my best friends. 
what did you as a student do? What did I do? Like I said, I I was in uh, I was in the dorms, and that was really easy. Uh, uh, diff definitely facilitated uh, friendships. Um, okay, I see so many good uh, programs and events on campus that I want to attend, but because of hectic work and class schedule, it makes it impossible to go to any. Yeah, no, I hear you. you you're working. You you have classes. You know, maybe when you transfer to another university, maybe you'll be able to, uh, you know, settle down a bit and maybe have more time. Was this the same issue for your generation of students? And how, if so, how did you manage to make time for such things? Again, I was kind of lucky. Um, you know, my father-in-law said, uh, you know, as long as you study, I'll pay for school and books and food. I mean, I had like no spending money. <laughs> but I had school, books, and food covered, uh, and my dorm covered. So that helped me a lot because I didn't have to work. Uh, yeah, I didn't have any money to go out to movies or have fun most of the time. You know, I, I had very, very little pocket money, very little. I mean like 50 bucks a month. Uh, but but I, I didn't want to work it on top of that, so I just I made that money stretch. I just bought the essentials, and I stuck to my meal plan, and that was it. And uh, – and, uh, you know, but the cool part was I was in the dorms and I had lots of times to hang out with my friends. Um, nowadays, all the places that hire look for extra activities on resumes and stuff. But for us students, it's getting impossible to partake in such. Activities. Yeah, I, I feel you. Maybe make it so that you, the job you're doing when you're not studying, uh, you know, the job you're going to is the uh you know, the activity is the thing, is the thing. So instead of getting, let's say you want to be a physical therapist. I don't know. You want to be a physical therapist. Instead of working at Starbucks, how about work at something physical or something to do with disabilities or something to do with where you're helping people? I don't know, something to do with you are involved with people and helping people in some way. Uh, you know, at least that is better than you know, working uh, in something like a Starbucks, which has nothing to do with physical therapy, you know, nothing to do with helping people <laughs> besides giving them coffee. <laughs> uh, so another question regarding the field of science. Uh, you said you were in a uh, research field and how it was hectic and uh, competitive. Uh, my main goal is to become a doctor, surgeon after medical school. I always wanted to teach and go into research fields of science. The only thing that holds me back to do such things is that I've heard the struggle financially for some researchers are on the brink of getting laid off because they don't get funding. Well, if you want to be a doctor or a surgeon, you're not going to get laid off. Uh, uh, you, you're going to be just fine. Um, if you want to be a researcher, then yeah, you're always on the brink of getting fired because if you don't get uh, you know a lot of grants, you're not going to make uh, tenure. If you don't make tenure, you know, it, it's 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 a big mess. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to research, that's one thing. If you want to be a doctor, surgeon, that's like the steadiest career you can have. The hard part's getting there. Okay, is there any truth to these, or are they scare tactics? It's true if you're going into research. It's not true if you're going into uh, surgery. So if I want to pursue becoming a professor, would you recommend it to your students? I would not recommend trying to become a research professor, research professor to my students because so few people achieve it. Uh, uh, out of out of every ten postdoctoral fellows, maybe one or two will achieve it. So, you know, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend those odds. You know, uh, you know, because you know, I wish someone had told me that that, that was, those were the odds of doing that, and maybe I would have uh, reconsidered and done the surgeon route myself. Since you're one and know the inside scoop. Yeah. So that yeah, that's that's my advice. My advisor at a different college straight up said no <laughs> and told me it's not worth it for some reason. Uh, your your advisor was correct. Uh, it's not worth it because so few people achieve the goal. I mean, you could let's say you want to be a research professor. Okay, you want to be a researcher at a university. Okay, go and get a PhD. Then you've got to go and do a fellowship. And then you will ha you will have a one or two in ten chance of becoming a research professor from what I have personally seen. So 
if those odds are good with you, um, then try it. You know, uh, if they're not good with you, then don't try it. I'm not going to say don't try it because, of course, some people are becoming research professors. But in my experience, you're the exception if you do. Uh, I know these are a lot of questions, but I finally can get some answers if possible. I hope I helped you out. I'm, I'm very candid with my answers. You know, again, I am not trying to disparage math. You know, it's something that I am not personally that interested in myself. But uh, it's also a field that I personally don't understand why it's such a big deal. Uh, because I think I'm a thinker, and I think I've achieved a lot academically. But I also am not a huge, you know, I'm not super enthusiastic about learning equations all day. And I don't think that uh, math, the field, should be as big a gatekeeper as it is. Um, just just jump through the hoops. Do you know, and I and if I was your age, I would have had to jump through all those hoops and do it too. But you know what? I already have my degree. Instead, I picked something else I was interested in, had less math involved, and, and I'm doing that. And I'm having a great time, actually. I'm actually enjoying automotive technology a lot more than I am uh, than when I, when I was taking computer science. So, you know, uh, I hope this helps. I don't know if I've been rambling. Yeah, it's about a 30-minute long video this time. I think you're, I'll, I'll stop with your question. I hope it helps at all. Uh, at least we had a good laugh about it. And... Uh, you know, just just stay with it. You know, let me tell you guys something. Let, let me explain something to you guys. At the end of the day, when you have your degree, it doesn't mean you're an expert in biology or whatever. It just means that it shows society that you jump through the hoops that society wanted you to jump through. Uh, you you got the you, you had the stick to itiveness to get through it. You had the wherewithal to do the hard work and wake up and get to the classes and take the quizzes and take the home do the homeworks and take the exams and and jump through all the little hoops including all the math hoops and all the english hoops and all the other hoops and 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 there's something to be said for that that means that you are someone who is trustworthy who is who has stick-to-itiveness and is a hard worker and i think that's all people really want half the time so anyway i hope this helps um you know, thanks for the questions. I'll keep answering them as candidly as I can. And, uh, you know, again, I, I hope that, uh, you know, I, I only wish you guys success and I hope that you're all successful in the future. All right. So with that, I'll sign off for today and uh, have a good night, everyone.